Hola and welcome to the second episode of Villarreal in the FM21 beta save. We are at match day one at home against Sevilla. It's going to be a pretty tough test against a, a rival of ours. They are going to be challenging for the top four along with us. And I fully expect them to be there near the end. They've got a very strong squad. So this uh, opening day fixture might... You know, even if we lose, I'm not going to take too much from it. You know, I, th I think we'll be okay throughout the season. But hopefully we can start off strong and positively here with a win. Um, I'd probably take a draw now if you asked me. But we're going to try and get all three points. We have made some transfer business uh, before the match. We have sold, most importantly, Carlos Backer. We only sold him for 1.4 million in total, but it got his 70 grand a week off the wage bill, which was basically 10% of the whole wage bill. So that's a huge amount of money back into the pot for us to buy more players with and uh, ship their wages around. We also got rid of uh, <laughs> Funes Mori, like in, like I said in the last episode, I'm, I'm not, I'm not his biggest fan in real life, and that might have fueled this transfer. But we end up getting nine million from Burnley for him, and I'm just happy he's gone. <laughs> I'll be honest. We did get a cheap replacement, so we've spent a bit more money than the thirteen million that we originally were assigned with. Uh, we'll start at the top. Our newest and most expensive purchase comes in the form of Ander. Don't ask me to say his surname, please. I, I, I just, I just can't. But Baronets, Baronetska, we'll go with that. Uh, he is a left winger from Real Sociedad. Eighteen years old, three star current ability, five star potential. He's going to be in the Spanish team for years to come. And for not a lot of money, okay, it's a lot of money to us, but not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. I couldn't really say no. It was in an area we were looking to improve anyway. Um, yes, we have our youth player, Jeremy, as well, but he's only currently two-star at 17 years old. So gives them both fresh competition. Um, and I don't think Jeremy's quite ready yet, where I think Ander is very much ready to take on this starting role for us. Yeah, I mean, apparently Moy Gomez is better than him, but I'm not going to uh, put a lot of stock in that. We also brought in Roberto Gagliardi, uh, Gagliardini, Gagliardini. I will get there. Uh, for five million from Inter, I think that's an absolute bargain. Gives us more depth and strength in the midfield. He's a box-to-box -box player. I love box-to-box -box players. Uh, he's got all the physical attributes. Teamwork a 19, tackling a 17. I didn't realise he was that good at it, to be honest. But, you know, I thought he was more known for his passing. But excellent, great, even better. Um, so he will uh, he will definitely be a mainstay in our midfield for a few years to come. Yeah, only 26 years old. So we'll definitely get his best years out of him for us. We brought in the cheap replacement for Funes Mori in the form of Juan Cruz Comar. Uh, he came from that Argentinian club, T Talares, sure. Uh, only came for £1.8 million and already had Spanish citizenship, so he didn't even take up a, uh, a, a non-EU spot, which was quite handy. Uh, I, I was fully expecting to, to lose a spot to him, but... Didn't even have to. Great. Only two and a half star uh, current ability, three three star potential. Technically the third best centre back at the club. Uh, uh, pretty much the same as Juan Foyth, who we've got on loan from Spurs. Um, I did promise him regular football after this season. That may not happen. And I'll show you why that might not happen. Because, you know, he's a, he's a solid centre back. He's got all good stats. However, I wasn't aware that there was a clause in Juan Foyth's loan contract with us. So he has two and a half star, but potential three and a half. 
I would say he's probably better than uh, the other guy already. <laughs> I need to learn the names. <laughs> but the clause I'm talking about is an optional future fee of £15 million. And I, at the moment, I'm going to try and plan to take it. Because for a three and a half star centre back, that's not bad business. So we'll see how the season progresses. We'll see who else becomes available. But I think £15 million for Juan Foyt is a tidy bit of business. Um, I fully expect him in real life to be bought by Villarreal by the end of the season. So we'll see if we uh, see if we follow in that route. Who else did we bring in? Let's have a look. I've, I've definitely planned for the future with some of these purchases, as you'll see now. So we've brought in Irvin Omic from Zebra, Juventus. He's an attacking midfielder, 17-year-old Austrian. Uh, we only paid his compensation clause, which was something like £600,000, which is next to nothing. And for a four-star potential ability player, I'm willing to take a bit of a gamble on that one. Um, I've just shipped him. Well, I was going to ship him out on loan. Uh, he got injured the second day he was with us. So he's still out for somewhere between six days and three weeks. So as soon as he's fit and able, we'll be sending him out on loan to get some game time. One I'm particularly proud of is Alejandro Francis. Um, right back we bought from Real Sociedad as well. No, no. Castiglione, sorry. Oh no, sorry, from Zaragoza we bought him. We've loaned him to Castiglione. Um, yet again, same kind of player, except for he, he's already a two-star ability at 18 years old, Spanish. He's got bags of ability. Absolute bags of it. When he was here, he was showing up as a five-star potential ability. So... Get him out on loan this season. Probably bring him into the fold next season. He, if he's at a two and a half star, I'll, I'll take the risk then. But he he could be an excellent, excellent purchase for us for the years to come. If, if he ends up staying with us for the next 10 years, then wow, you know. <laughs> but I, I, I expect big things from uh, Alejandro. And I hope he delivers. I hope he has a good time in Castillon. I think that concludes all of my business. Obviously, everything else here had been done before I arrived. Um, I, yeah, I'm assuming that's that. Kind of wish Santi Cazola was still knocking about the place. Got a bit of a soft spot for him, but oh well. So first game of the season, Sevilla at home at the Estadio de la Ceramica. Uh, it's a shame it's going to be empty, but we'll go through to the team selection. So this is the team we're going to face. We're going to have Sergio Asenjo in net, um, his role ability has uh, fixed itself for now, thank God. We've got uh, Ruben Pena at right back, mainly due to an, in uh, an injury to Mario Gaspar. Um, it's only a small injury, so he'll be back in back in the first team, hopefully soon. Uh, the centre-back partnership, which will probably be the mainstay of this season, will be Albiol and Torres. Albiol is a ball-playing defender. We've got uh, Monero starting at left-back. We have had some interest in him. And I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him leave for a decent amount of money as we've got quite a bit of cover at left back. So we'll see how that goes. We've got S Esbutan and Costa, who also cover at left back. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens with Monero. But for, the, for this game, we'll start him. Uh, Francis Coquelin in our, our holding midfielder role with our new signing, Gagliardini, and Parejo in midfield. Love that box to box. I'm not sure Parejo will stay as a deep line playmaker. We may make him an advanced playmaker. We'll wait and see. See how this plays out. Uh, we've got Paco Athalsa as our attacking option. An injury to Chukweze means Monero starts at the right wing. And Ander, as I will call him from now on, is playing on the left wing. We have got Pedraza to come in as well with. Jeremy Pino as well. Plenty of options on the bench. I'm actually quite happy with the depth we have right now. So I think if we do end up making any more business, it'll well, we've got no money left in the bank. So if we if we make any more business, it will be from selling a player and upgrading them for the first team. But as you can see, there's not there's not much not many players that uh, have, have generated much interest. We did get any an info about Roma wanting Gerard Moreno. 
yet again, wouldn't be opposed to seeing him leave as long as the, the figures were right. Ballpark area was 25 to £30 million. Pounds. I'd probably take that. So, watch this space. Let's get into the game. Oh, yeah. 12 possible substitutes. See, this is what I don't get. When, when, whilst, you know, the Premier League, I, I've been watching Premier League, completely forgot that Spain have all the substitutes because that means I get, I get to make five a game. Ooh, that's exciting. Okay, so we'll have Trigueros as number eight. Espiritan. Uh, we've sold Comar. I, I don't Oh, no, no, not Comar. Ah, I sold that um, Moroccan player. I have no idea who he is. He's gone. But yeah, we'll bring Comar in. Please. Espiritan and Kubo. So that's basically our whole squad, apart from the 300 players. <laughs> In 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 the squad today. Excellent. Cool. Let's go for it. I'll get an, uh, well. I, I can't really fill it, so let's just let's just leave it at eleven. I think eleven substitutes are uh, is more than plenty. Um, let's just okay. Little tutorial. So our tactics lacks familiarity. That's fine. Most people are happy about it. Pareko is happy to make his debut as, as well as Ander. Ah, uh, my little Ander. Let's go to game. I'm very worried about Sevilla's uh, counter-attacking capabilities. Um, Lucas Ocampos and Suso as well, two top-rate players. Now they have Rakitic as well in the midfield. Luke Dijon's always been a tall, menacing presence up front. So I'm hoping that we hope we keep him under wraps. Uh, just a little info about the new dressing room team talks. There's so many options now. Let's 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 pump our fists and let's say, come on lads, show me what you can do. Um I'd like to do it to all of them, if that's okay. I mean, okay, okay, that's cool. Pump fists. Oh, so now it's individuals. All right, so I did that, and everyone seemed all right with it. Cool. I know the match engine still doesn't look incredible, but I think it looks a lot better than last year. So we have massive changes here on our screen. Um, I'm still not sure about the dugout screen because that just looks like a big old pile of mess to me uh, the biggest change we have is xg now xg is basically expected goals from shots so the more shots you have in the better positions that you have say you get a clear shot on target your xg will go up massively whereas if you're shooting from 30 yards out it'll give probably a 0.1 or something you know quite small so you can really tell a lot from this new xg stat so not even a single highlight in the first half but as xg will show you we have pretty much dominated it severe only managing one shot in the whole of the first half and our xg is 0.5 compared to their 0.03 which is really is abysmal um so that's very positive for us however the fact we haven't scored is not so positive so we'll be going to the dressing room i'm not going to throw the water bottle yet <laughs> as tempting as it is we're going to outstretch arms we're going to say i'm pleased with how things are going keep it up everyone looks inspired and motivated that's what we like why are we getting this now Oh. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> Let's go for the second half. Hmm. Our first highlight, thank God. <laughs> 55 minutes in and Sevilla are playing out from the back from the goalkeeper, Jesus Navas. 
running down the right hand side, plays it through to the centre to Rak uh, Rakitic, back to Navas, plays the ball through to Ocampos, who's charging out a defensive line and he puts it wide. That was a good chance for Ocampos. Um, 60 minute substitutions are needed, clearly because we have not scored yet and we are we are we're winning the game but we're just not doing exactly what we need so oh my god this screen's so different <laughs> where do i go for is it this one no is it this one no okay you have to give me a minute Okay, so I finally found the tactic screen. Yet again, looking very different. Uh, looking at the players, um, a few players have had a terrible game. Sergio Asensio has had a terrible game considering it's nil-nil. I'm not quite sure why. But we're going to bring Kwame Costa on for Alberto Moreno. We also have these new indicators of fitness as... The game's going for more realism, you know, before we had a statistic out of 100. Whereas now it's a bit more, you know, it's not as, as, as precise, which I guess in essence it, it kind of is. Because you don't know down to the percentage how tired a player is. So looking at the overall composition here, Ander and Gagliardi are our most tired players. Uh, Gagliardi, Gagliardini is, is no, it's no surprise really because he's the box the box who's so been running everywhere and Ander only came in I think it was only a few days ago so we should probably look at changing them um, I'm loath to change Gagliardini because he's actually one of our best performers so we might leave him on the pitch for now we'll bring on Pedraza for Ander make him a We'll keep him as an inverted winger. He seems okay with that. Vincente Evora is going to come on for Gagliandini. Who can play as... He can box the box. Sure. He does seem to be nervous then. Who else can we replace? I'm looking at the right hand side of where Gerard Moreno is because not a lot's happened. If I can bring him as a striker. Yeah, why not? So we'll put Gerard Moreno up top, have him as an advanced forward, and then bring on Jeremy Pino on that inverted winger. I'm going to make Pedraza an attacking as well. And I'm going to make Danny Pareco an advanced playmaker with an attacking mentality. Because that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm looking for a goal. We, we've, got, we've got the balance of play. So now we just need to execute a finish. I think that's what I'll go with for now. Confirm the changes. And we'll continue the game. And hopefully that will make the difference. Danny Pareko with a corner, which is cleared. Jeremy picks it up on our halfway line. We're feeding it forward. Coquelin. Pino. Plays it out wide. Peña plays it in. And Danny Pareko, on his debut for Villarreal, scores a goal. Exactly. Instant impact from the substitutions there. Peña does very well, and Jeremy as well, with the pass. Great things from the young lad. Excellent, excellently worked goal. That was precisely what we needed. And in response to that, we are going to change it up. I'm going to go back to balanced. We're going to shout out to praise them and hopefully see out this game. That was a really well worked goal. That was excellent. Good stuff. Danny Pareko delivering on his debut for Villarreal. 
And the XG tells the story, really. Sevilla playing out from the back again. Big ball forwards. Comes out to Pedraza. Coquelin plays out to Costa. He's looking for the cross. Back out to Coquelin. He takes a long shot. Ooh! A whisker past the post. And that would have been something. Both players who came from Valencia scoring for Villarreal on their debuts, they'd be seething. I think they're seething anyway. I, I can't imagine what a Valencia fan must be thinking right now. How their club's just been run into the ground like this. I mean, in real life, they're still doing okay. But, you know, having to sell all your best players because you're in a financial hole is not where anyone wants to be. Jeremy has the ball out on the right, plays it in. Pedraza through to Moreno, and Moreno has his first goal of the season as well. Striker off to a good start. <laughs> is this where Roma come in with like 30 million pounds and I go, yeah, you played really well, Gerard, but you're, uh, you're off for Italy, mate. Thanks for that. I don't know. I, I I might have to start looking for a replacement now so that I know if if he does go, we've got somebody who's good enough to fill in that role because we, we need competition for it. Obviously, we've just got the two, but, you know, we need someone of that ability. If, if we're going to lose him, we need someone of his caliber to come in. 2-0 against Sevilla. That's a pretty good start. Very happy with that. I'm, 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 I honestly can't fault anybody. I mean, Paul Torres doing excellent. Jeremy Pino was, was inspired when he came on. The 17-year-old lad. I love it. And Pareko is going to be instrumental to our season. He's going to be so important. He's, I haven't built the team around him, but that's the way it kind of is. He's the focal point in the middle of the mid midfield. And he's going to be pinging passes around, getting himself into attacking positions. He's the guy that's going to make it all happen. Good stuff. Well, uh, outstretched arms. A good win, boys. Well done. Greens all around. Great first, first match. Two achievements for me. Clean sheet and first victory. Love it. Great stuff. So now we have... Levante away. Hopefully, well, I want to say it's hopefully an easier game, but that was pretty easy anyway. 